Hey everybody! I made this lovely bistro patio set and we're gonna go through how I made it together because I don't really remember a lot of it. The umbrella can be opened by turning the crank in any direction, so that's interactivity at its finest. I made this miniature while I was stuck in my house in the middle of Hurricane Harvey. I do live in Houston, so I'm all too aware of the devastation that has occurred. I have a lot of friends and family who were affected by Hurricane Harvey, and my home, through pure circumstance, was not flooded. You probably wouldn't be watching this video if it was. But I have no doubt in my mind that it would have if my part of town hadn't been in between Harvey's record-breaking rain bands during the worst days of deluge. In fact, the Weather Channel actually created two new colors of rainfall for their radar because of this hurricane. I've lived here my entire life and I've never seen floodwaters halfway up my driveway, let alone over the curb. And that was only four hours of heavy rainfall for one day. Most of Houston had even heavier rainfall for three or four days straight. I can barely wrap my mind around that, so I truly hope everyone else can as well. Anyway, I put links to what I feel are the best charities and hurricane relief funds to donate to down in the description if you'd like to help all the families who will be suffering from this disaster for the next several months, a lot even longer. Any help is appreciated, even sharing this video helps in its own little way. The first thing I did was draw out the dimensions for the set. This is my first time working with metal, so I went with a hard to bend music wire that I bought at Texas Art Supply, which happens to be my favorite art supply store. I put their website down in the description as well if you want to check it out. One millimeter was the thickest wire that I could hand cut with my hard wire cutters, but the scale is still accurate. My first chair has a few sharp notches in it, but the other three came out a lot smoother after practicing with the first one. I started using a sharpie to mark where the next bend would go, and I stuck with that method throughout the video. The mark slowly rubbed off through constant interaction between my fingers and the wire. Superglue worked out well as a bonding agent, but I might try to use my soldering kit the next time I do metalworking. Measure the space below the seat and cut the appropriate length wire. Bend and cut wire with extra give for trimming later. They might look the same, but every chair had their different dimensions. After I experimented with the first chair, I made the other three in bulk. I tried stop motion like Frank Howarth's woodworking channel, but it didn't turn out cool like his. I chose to make five seat slats in the 3.18mm wood and three back slats in the 2.12mm wood. At first I tried to cut out the approximate measurements, but quickly moved on to cutting out a lot of longer pieces and cutting them once glued onto the chair. Fill at the edges and place the slats at each end and then one in the middle to get that even spacing that I love so much. The back slats are created the same way, except I glued the middle slat first, then added the top and bottom. File everything down as desired. That right chair hasn't been touched up yet. I stained the wood with a cherry color and used watered down acrylic paint to age the chairs. For certain pieces, I want it to look like countless butts have slowly left their mark over time. I chose one of the smallest standard sizes of tables for four chairs and used 1.06 by 5.28 millimeter wood. Since the diameter was about 32 millimeters, I cut pieces a little longer than that and laid them side by side on a piece of tape, drawing a circle that was the exact 31.75 millimeters I needed. I cut off the extra length before filing down the true edge of the circle. I glue the pieces together using the tracing template as a guide. Find the circumference of your circle and cut out that length with tin or aluminum one millimeter thick. I scratched marks into the metal to keep my tin cutters on the right sized path. I use a blunt flat edge to strain out any imperfections in the tin and super glue it onto the circle.
Stain and paint the tabletop with the same finish and water down acrylic as the chairs. I added little stains for wear and tear and I don't regret my decision. Use the same techniques for the legs of the table as was done for the chairs. I twisted a metal head pin into 3.5mm rings and cut them out for decoration and to hold the table legs together. I drilled a 3mm hole into the middle of the table with my pin vise, super glue a metal ring on top of the hole in the table. Add the legs to the second metal ring, evenly spacing them out. Glue the tabletop to its legs and we'll start working on the umbrella pole. I bought an assortment of these aluminum tubes from Micromark Online. A link to their website is also in the description. I'll be using the 1.5, 3, and 3.5 millimeter tubes. This is the 3 millimeter. I drilled a 1.5 millimeter hole 34 millimeters from the bottom for the future crank. I sawed the top off just to have the tube move around in my craft area better. Drill a 1 millimeter hole at the top end for the pull system later on. Take any 1mm thick scrap wood and drill a 3mm hole with 8 total 1.5mm holes around it. File this out into a circle. I used a 7mm diameter and make two of them. These will be the mechanisms that house the entire umbrella workings. I decided on the official height, which ended up being the 101.6mm I stated on my design and saw the excess tube off. I also sawed off 3mm of the 3.5mm tube for the opening mechanism. Glue onto one of the wooden circles and make sure it can fall by itself. I made 16 total hooks with a few head pins. Super glue 8 hooks onto the circle. Because I mix myself up a lot about which direction the hooks would face, this is right, this is wrong for future reference when you see me do it the incorrect way later on. I filled the 3mm hole back up on the second circle because I changed a certain aspect about the mechanism. When you glue these hooks on, you want them to be more outwardly facing than the other hooks. I used a thinner 0.64mm music wire for the umbrella ribbing. Cut out 8 of these with an eye bent at the end, each 40mm long, and close the hooks with pliers. I moved on to cutting out 8 pieces from the 1.5mm tube mentioned earlier. Mine are 11mm long. At this point, I drilled a half millimeter hole for the umbrella to stay pinned open so it doesn't collapse when you let go of the crank. Super glue the top onto the pole. Don't mind the strings, I was experimenting. Okay, I will try to explain how to sew all the metal together. You'll notice I have the bottom hooks on backwards. I fixed that later. I used a strong plastic thread that is very flexible. The clamps are there to weigh the whole piece down so it doesn't fall in any one direction. Feed the thread through the first tube, through its corresponding bottom hook, and down the other side of the tube. Tighten as much as possible. Swap each end of the thread under the ribbing. Wrap both sides back over the top and pass through the tube again. Tighten and the first tube is sewn on. The others won't be as complicated. For the next tube over, I took that side's thread and passed it through the next hook. Feed through the tube, and with the tube on the left of the rib, wrap the thread over the right, under the rib, to the left, back over, and through the tube again. Feed the thread through its hook again from the right side. This figure eight motion keeps the tube balanced in the middle of the rib as it's tightened. For the last tube, I fed the left thread through the left side of the last hook and the right thread through the right. Feed both ends through the tube, Wrap the threads under the ribbing opposite each other again, wrap back over the top of the rib and tie together as tight as possible. I super glued both the wrap underneath and the residual knot. To cut out the proper size fabric, we need to know the length between the seams at the top and bottom and the height of the fabric. Add about two or three millimeters of seam allowance. You need to know the diameter of the fly as well. Give it the same seam allowance. I used a fabric that was 80% spandex for stretchiness and had a canvas look to it that was also opaque. 
I cut out eight pieces and started sewing the edges together using my template to ensure that each trapezoid was even. This fabric has no right or wrong side, so it was basically a free-for-all. I don't know how to sew it all, but I looked up the stitching that I got into the groove of doing naturally, and it ended up being a backstitch, so everything is backstitched. I hemmed the outer edge, but not the inner edge, since the inner edge will be hidden from view anyway. I also didn't have to sew pouches for the ribbing since the hem folded over and created a perfect pouch at each point. For the fly, I cut out the needed circle, including seam allowance, and marked off 8 points. Cut the fabric into an octagon, cut slits close to the inner circle, fold over, and stitch a hem. Once the hem is sewn, I fold the fly three times and cut the tip off to create an opening for later. Sew the fly onto the umbrella while it's centered, with its points touching the seams of the umbrella. With the ribbing tucked into the hemming, sew directly in front of and behind the plastic thread that's connecting the tube to the rib. <laughs> it's opening! I filed down an ornamental piece for the top of the umbrella. Drill the half millimeter hole about three millimeters down, stain or color it, and glue a short head pin inside. Drill another hole into the umbrella and glue the ornament on top. Sew together a little tie. Now, using a very strong, thin string, run it down the hole at the top of the pole and bring it back out the crank hole. Leave a lot of string at each end. Tie string at the top end to create four total strings. Pull the four strings from the crank end and be sure to push the main knot through the top hole. Push two strings through to the other side so you have two on both sides. Tie each string to its coordinating diagonal hook. Tie a head pin at the other end of the string while the umbrella is closed all the way. Glue the knot so the crank will work properly and push the head pin through to the other side. Bend the crank to the shape that works for you and the umbrella is finished! The last thing I did was sew together a couple of cute pillows! I like making things that are interactive in some way, so if you would like to see more of those videos, comment a few suggestions and I'll see if anything strikes my fancy. Please feel free to follow me on Instagram to get a sneak peek at what I'm currently working on for my next video. I'd like to thank Lola from the Four Musketeers channel for using my birdhouse tutorial to make her own. It feels good to know I'm making any sense at all sometimes. Thank you everyone so much for watching my videos, I'll try not to disappear too often. I'll see you next time. The first thing, <clears throat> 1.06 by 1, wah, 75 centimeters, not centimeters, to straighten out any imperfections in the, la la <laughs> Twisted a metal head pin into three and a half millimeter, millimeter, and cut them out for the, la la la. Damn rich. Millimeter tubes. <clears throat> oh no. I used a point, ha, ah, ha, ah, Okay, super the, uh, super the glue. <laughs> Wrap both sides, blah. I felt myself smack. That was quite opaque. Ugh. I cut out, <sighs> Tie a head pin at the other end of the string while the com- ah. Bend the crank, bend the crank. Bend the crank, ugh, crank, why? Bend the crank that, blah. <sighs> that was a lot.